Hey everybody, welcome back. My name is Annie Elise and this is Ten to Life, where we're talking all things true crime. If you already know what we do here, I don't need to tell you, you get it. But if you're brand new and you're stopping by for the first time, that's what this channel is all about. We talk about some of the craziest, most terrifying, most insane cases out there. And I mean, nothing is really off limits. Sometimes so much so that it's like a little bit borderline like ultra disturbing. But anyways, so if you are brand new and checking out the channel for the first time, I hope you do enjoy today's case coverage and consider supporting the channel and subscribing by hitting that subscribe button below and turning your notifications on. That way you will get notified of new case videos as I post them. So the case we are talking about today is one that literally sends shivers up my spine. I didn't even know this thing existed, which it's like the root of this case. Uh, like it's a, something that actually, I guess, is very common. I didn't even know this existed. And when I first heard about it, I was like, there's no way. That's an urban legend. This doesn't happen. Oh, no, 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 no. It really does happen. It is real and it is out there. And I just feel like I need to kind of just like get comfy right now with you guys and like talk to you about this because like, oh my god i wish i had like a flashlight i don't even know guys okay so there is a terrifying crime that is beginning to trend out there called frogging frogging spelled with a ph but pronounced like frogging like an fr so this is a trend where strangers secretly live in other people's homes and not just live in their homes but monitor the family and really like envelop themselves in their lives and for one couple this intrusive and creepy crime crossed the line of just being a home invasion and it became much darker and ultimately it changed their lives forever so guys get ready turn your lights on don't be scared and let's jump right in Sense to life with annie elise starts right now today's video is sponsored by gin rummy stars a free-to-play friendly gin rummy game that you can play anywhere at any time I personally always try to find games that have both a fun aspect to it, but also like a strategic element because I'm always liking to just like exercise my brain. And I'll be honest, I'm a little competitive too. Not a little bit competitive, like I'm pretty competitive of a person. And luckily I came across Gin Rummy Stars, a free to play Gin Rummy game. And you can click the link in the description box to download it for free. What I love is that you can play against live opponents all around the world which I feel like makes it even more challenging sometimes. And I personally love that. Now, if you've never played Gin Rummy before, you really should try it because it is so much fun. I used to try so hard to get Gin every single round, every time I played. But for me now, I am so laser focused on winning <laughs> that I don't even try to go for Gin anymore. I just try and collect as many groupings of the same number as possible or like the suited little mini straights as quickly as possible because whoever is left with the highest amount of leftover cards basically loses and those points go to the opponent. So I'm always trying to knock first and leave them with tons of cards so that I get all those points. I told you guys, I'm competitive. <laughs> My biggest point gap when playing was actually this round where I got a 41 point point gap and my opponent got zero. Wah, wah, wah. It's really easy to learn and so fun to play. Last night, I found myself playing until my phone battery literally like alerted me that I was on 10%. And then I was like, okay, Annie, it's time to like shut it down, go to bed, get some sleep. So now I am fully charged though, and I'm ready to go back at it. Do not sleep on this game. Click the link in the description, download this game for free and receive 1000 free coins from yours truly. My name is Annie on there. So find me at the gin table and let's play. Thank you, Gin Rummy Stars, for sponsoring today's video, and thank you to all of you viewers for understanding that sponsors are essential to the channel if we want to grow it to a place where I can deliver you more true crime all the time. All right, let's jump back into today's case. On September 20th, 2019, in Honolulu, Hawaii, Brittany and James Campbell returned to their home after being away on vacation. The couple and their two sons had been away from their home for about a week, not knowing that when they returned to their home, their lives would be changed forever. 36-year-old James approached their family home, and when he went to open his front door, he found that he couldn't. There was someone on the other end of the door pulling the door closed, making it so that he was unable to open it. 
All of his family was with him, so who was this stranger on the opposite side of the door? Whoever they were, they were inside, and were inside trying to keep this door shut. Not only that, but then this strange man started peeking through the door opening as he was holding the door shut, and then he said, this is not your house. Just very calmly and very nonchalantly. So this, of course, made James not only worried, but very uneasy, given the man's matter-of-fact demeanor. So James just kind of leaped into action to protect himself and his family, and he grabbed a sledgehammer from the side of the house, which he was using to then force the intruder out of the home. And as he was doing this, his wife, Brittany, was frantically calling 911. When the intruder was finally out of the house and in the front yard, James noticed that he was actually wearing James' clothing. So was this a homeless man who didn't have any belongings? Was it somebody who was trying to take on James' identity? What the heck was going on here? The police quickly arrived and arrested this person, who was a 23-year-old man named Ezekiel Zayas. Now, after he was arrested, James and Brittany went inside, and they found that their house was absolutely trashed, and it had been turned completely inside out. Pots and pans were piled on top of each other, their bedroom was completely trashed, there was music equipment that had been moved, I mean, it was a disaster. And though strange and extremely unsettling, you would think, okay, this was a terrifying encounter, but at least he has now been arrested, he's gone, we can clean the house, change the locks, and things will be okay, right? Well, wrong, because for the Campbell family, this nightmare was just beginning. After going into their home and observing all of the damage, they began to discover horrifying evidence that whoever had been inside their safe family home had actually been secretly monitoring the family from inside the home. They found one of their old laptop computers was out and had actually been being used to log diary entries of sorts. And not only disturbing personal diary entries by this strange man who was an intruder, but extremely chilling details regarding their family. On the computer, there was a typed manifesto about gruesome, gruesome plans that this sick man made for the entire Campbell family. The manifesto was called the Omnivore Trials, a rehabilitation for rat-like people. And some of the plans typed up included in this were performing hands-on surgeries on the family members, for sexual reconstruction, and even a hand transplant, writing about how he could turn this family into perfect people. He even knew intimate details about the couple's health, such as that Brittany was having fertility treatments and they were trying for another child, which they had not disclosed to anyone. He somehow knew their personal medical information. And by the looks of it, him wanting to perform surgery and turn this family into what he described as perfect people wasn't just some creepy fantasy or some sick and twisted thought that this man had, because next to the computer, there were knives carefully laid out. Can you imagine how terrifying that discovery would be? Now, as if that isn't bad enough, as Brittany is reading through this manifesto and looking at the notes on the computer, she also discovered a video that the intruder had recorded while using her computer a video in which he appeared to be completely naked. So absolutely horrified at what she was seeing and the thought about this disgusting creep having sat naked in her chair, the terror began to set in because Brittany started to realize that this man had actually been in their home for a lot longer than they initially thought. And the family started to recall these out of the ordinary and strange occurrences that had taken place in the house in the months leading up to that vacation they had away. In one instance, the computer's webcam just turned on out of nowhere in the middle of the night. In another, there were doors that were left open or completely unlocked. They also recalled one time hearing their dog barking as if the dog were scared of something. All things that led James and Brittany to believe that someone else had actually been living with them all of that time. And as these strange things kept happening, they weren't just random occurrences. They were caused by someone inside the home, someone who was not a family member. And that realization was absolutely chilling. It also brought the realization as to how this stranger knew about their personal medical details. 
It was because he was eavesdropping and could hear them discussing it from inside the home. I can't imagine not only coming home and finding somebody inside my house, but then finding everything in disarray, finding notes written on my computer, notes about me, notes about my family, notes about plans that this person had for my family. And then as if you're trying to, as if that's not enough and if you're just digesting all of that, then realizing, holy shit, this person has been living in our house for months. They've been in the attic for months living here. That's what all of these things were. They weren't just, you know, haunted occurrences by a ghost or coincidences taking place. Somebody was living here this whole time, watching us, listening to us, observing us. It is horrifying. And now new at nine, a nightmare for one Oahu family. They went on vacation and returned only to find a stranger living in their home. And it only gets even more bizarre from there. Kimberly Speakman tonight with the story you'll see only on KHON2. Kimberly? Howard, the family tells me the man not only trashed their home, he left them all sorts of disturbing notes throughout the house. He violated he violated our family, he violated our home. This is the man she's referring to, a stranger who broke into their locked home and transformed it into his own, even taking videos of himself with their computer. But they say what's even more disturbing are the notes he left for them. It was strange and he wrote about like wanting to perform surgeries on us and transform us and stuff like that. They found weird concoctions in the kitchens, items left out, and bodily fluids all over furniture. Everything was torn apart, like, and like Britney's, it was, things were put out on display and kind of organized, but chaotic at the same time. They didn't even know he had made himself at home until they returned. I got to the front door, and when I got there, um, there was a stranger at the door. I yelled at him to get out of the house, get out of the house. Police arrived at the scene and arrested him. Ezekiel Zayas was charged with burglary, but a judge allowed him to be put on supervised release while he awaits trial. It's terrifying. It's terrifying that he's out. And this seems like somebody who needs help. Uh, him just being released back to the streets under supervised release seems um, inappropriate. You should, someone like this needs, needs some mental health uh, care. I'd like for... Due process. Yeah, I'd like for due process. And I'd like to, you know, see this through and make sure that it doesn't just happens. get dropped and kind of swept under the rug. But wait, because it gets even crazier. So the Campbells have now spoken out and said that this incident has affected them psychologically as a family, of course, and uprooted their entire lives. So much so that they actually moved out of that home and said that recovering from this has been extremely difficult, which absolutely, I couldn't imagine that it wouldn't be difficult. Now, really quickly, I just want to talk about this term frogging. So the term frogging, which is said to originate from frogs leaping from place to pit place, has only been coined actually in recent years. But the crime apparently itself has been occurring for decades and it's now trending again. And experts say that many people think it's an urban myth, which I did, but that it is actually more common than you think and that it starts out slowly. Things start to go missing. Things are put back in the wrong place, but that people are more apt to believe that they're living with a ghost than a long-term trespasser. And what is so eerie is that while squatters will try to take control of homes that are empty, whether it is after an eviction or a vacant home or whatever it may be, froggers actually look for residences that are occupied. And they actually often go completely undetected until the, the primary resident physically sees them by accident or on surveillance footage somehow. And what I can't seem to wrap my mind around is the punishment, or lack thereof, for somebody who chooses to invade somebody's home like this. Because this 23-year-old intruder was arrested and charged with burglary, but he was later released, and then he was arrested again down the road for vandalism allegations. And clearly, he was dangerous. This wasn't just some, you know, tall tale that he was writing on the computer because while he was serving his prison time for that 
later arrest, he allegedly killed another inmate in 2020, and then he was charged with first and second degree murder. And no triple C inmate is dead. Another has been arrested for murder. 27-year-old Ezekiel Zayas was arrested for first-degree murder. The Department of Public Safety says OCCC staff were alerted of an assault at 9.05 last night. 62-year-old inmate Vance Grace was taken by ambulance to the hospital where he died. So this guy was capable of being dangerous, taking somebody's life. He was, you know, had made all of these horrifying, I don't know what you would call it, uh, you know, testimonies or aspirations or whatever it is in this manifesto of his and when he was arrested he was charged with burglary but then later let go like couldn't he have come back like how was there not a stricter punishment and this isn't the only occurrence of a slap on the wrist type of punishment for something so invasive and so disturbing because in an entire separate incident of a group of college women they discovered that there was a 30 year old man living in their closet they had noticed articles of clothing started to go missing and shoes here and there, but they legit thought that their home was haunted or something. But then they found a blonde hair in their shower and all of the girls had dark hair. They knew something was up and they eventually found a man hiding in the closet. Imagine someone living inside your house and you don't even know it and for months on end. Intruder secretly living inside her attic. Man found hiding between a family's walls. Man slithers out from under home. Make sure your crawl spaces are locked. I honestly thought we had ghosts. I thought that the whole place was haunted, honestly. And we found out what the name of it was. I, I mean, I'm. I had to go Google it. Pre-law student Amaya McBride and her two college roommates were victims of frogging. You had clothes missing from your closet. I did. Clothes, shoes. I used to color coordinate the items in my closet, so I would notice if my favorite light blue wash jeans were missing. Then they found mysterious blonde hair in the tub. The roommates all have black hair. How would he know when to leave? That's the tricky part. I don't know. It's almost like he knew all of our routines. Finally, they found 30 year old Drew Swafford in a closet. The homeless man pled guilty to breaking and entering and served 79 days in jail. Pled guilty to breaking and entering, but he only spent 79 days behind bars. How is that possible? How is it possible that somebody who is literally living in your home for weeks, for months, watching you, how is it only 79 days and couldn't you um, couldn't you stick some more charges other than breaking and entering like peeping tom or things like you know things like that how is this possible because these people are clearly not only dangerous but they have no problem violating somebody's privacy or any potential protection orders or anything like that now because this crime is apparently trending again in such a way there's actually a series now on it on i think it's on is it on Lifetime? I think it is on Lifetime. And the Campbell family is one of the first episodes that's going to air. And they're highlighting, it's a documentary series, they're highlighting all of these instances and situations in which frogging has happened. And it freaks me out. Because I can't tell you how many nights I'm alone watching TV on my couch and I hear a creak, 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 you know, upstairs. And I'm like, oh, you know, it's the wind or it's, I don't know, you know, an old house, the flooring's making noises. Uh, no, now I'm going to be sitting there and I'm going to be like, oh, it's going to go creak, creak, creak. I'm like, great. Somebody's just living in my attic right now and probably like peeping through the vent and listening to all me talk about it on here to tend on to all my tend to lifers. And now he's probably going to write some sort of manifesto. It is so scary. It is so scary. It is just like, because it's one of those things where even though it's like not a actual bloody, gruesome, hands-on crime, the thought of somebody invading your safe space and your thoughts and your inner workings and intimate details of your life in such a way, it is just so unnerving. And not to mention going to the next level of this man talking about how he wanted to perform sexual reconstruction on the family, hands transplants, all of these things. And they had two kids. It's horrible. It's horrible. So again, as I had said, I thought this was like an urban legend, urban myth, like apparently so many people do, but no, it is real and it is common. So check your attics, check your chimneys, lock your doors. You know, I don't, it's so scary. It is so scary. And apparently it's so common. And now with certain areas of the country and the homelessness rate increasing and, you know, 
not even just that, but people like, yeah, they're saying, oh God, it's just so messy. Like people being released from jail early, like going very light on crime, all of these things. I feel like the likelihood and the possibility of this upticking is even more because of just the state that our country and our world really, I guess, is in right now. So just be extra cautious, guys, because this one scares me. Um, and if you want to look, at, if you want to educate yourself more and watch some of those docu series episodes where it talks about actual families this has happened to in different circumstance when this has hap- circumstances when this has happened, um, I believe it's Lifetime. I'll try to find the link and put it in the description box below. All right, guys, that's all I got for you today. Stay safe and keep the lights on. I don't know. It's freaking me out. All right, guys, until the next one, stay safe. Bye.